Okay, uh, this is a little walkthrough through the first uh, problem in the or the experiment in the virtual fly lab. Um, the first thing you'll need to do is, of course, see the directions, which I have as a Google Doc. It talks a little bit about the Morgan Lab, um, fruit fly mutations, the life cycle notation, which I talked about in the other presentation, um, and let's see, gives you a URL for the fly lab and a little bit about the importance of keeping a lab notebook and how this assignment will be turned in as a lab notebook. So these are the instructions for the first experiment, the monohybrid cross, and you'll want to kind of keep this open in a separate tab uh, while you're working on your fly lab. So when you go to the fly lab, it looks like this. We've got a dissecting microscope, a calendar, an, an incubator where you can uh, raise young flies, and a computer where you'll order flies just like on Amazon.com. So, um, so let's see here. We're going to uh, basically try to replicate this um, particular cross, the Mendel's monohybrid cross. You know, where you cross two P generation plants uh, and got the hybrid in the F1 and then self the hybrid and got a three to one ratio among the phenotypes in the offspring. So the first thing that we'll do is we're going to order some flies and we're going to order a wild type female fly and you just order one by clicking on the a shopping cart there and you know you can look at all the different mutations that are available in eye color, body shape, uh, eye shape, wing size, wing shape and so on um, but in this case we're going to order a sepia eyed male and you can see the difference between the male and the female if you look closely at the pictures here. So when you look in your shopping cart you'll see here that you have a female wild type and a male sepia eyed so we'll check out and say yes, and bada bing bada boom, Fed FedEx, FedEx works pretty fast. Uh, we'll be able to see the, um, the flies here arrive. We'll unpack them, and you put the males and the female, or male and female, in a mating jar, um, where then uh, nature takes its course, and they will start producing some babies. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And you'll see that this generation of flies is now formed in the mating jar, and this would be the F1 generation of flies. So uh, we'll need to look at the F1s. So we'll pull the incubator out of our, uh, I'm going to pull the jar out of the incubator, and we'll gas the flies with ether, which puts them to sleep just so they slow down enough so that you can actually sort them. And this is actually what happens in a real um, you know, a fly lab. You use a little paintbrush and sort them, sort them into uh, genders and into phenotypes. So in this case, we have female uh, wild type flies, as you can see here, female. They're kind of a little bit longer, no sex combs. And wild type, they have the red eye. And we'll zoom out again. And then uh, we'll go to the male uh, wild type. We'll zoom out. And um, what I want you to do is to report your results. Um, if we go back to the um, description of the monohybrid cross, uh, it tells us what to do. Um, and we're going to send the data to the computer. So you'll click on send data to computer, yes. And then click, uh, when it goes back to this screen, analyze results. Now here you'll see that we have out of the total 1,212 flies, 608 were female wild type and 604 uh, were male. So uh, that's about a 50-50 ratio there, which could be expected. Now in this case, this is not a sex-linked trait, and we're just looking for 100% wild or 100% of the dominant trait in the F1 generation. So we're going to click on ignore sex there. And, and now um, I'm going to open up my Windows snipping tool, or you, know, you can use the equivalent tool uh, on the Mac. And I'm going to just capture that bit of data, all right, and then paste it. Uh, into a new Google Doc, or you can use Microsoft Word or whatever. Okay. And I'll just paste that information in there. Now, if you recall, if you recall from the instructions, um, we're going to need to annotate this as we would, um, you know, in a in a lab notebook. So I'm going to call the document virtual fly lab 
notebook, put my name on it, Davis. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll use the same thing for a little title here. All right, and this is Experiment 1 Mono Hybrid Cross. And uh, let me make this a little bit larger so everybody can see. Let me make a, maybe this text a little bit larger so you can see easily. Mm, not that big. How about two point? Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so in a lab notebook, you want to kind of explain what you did so that you can go back later uh, and do the experiment again. Uh, lab notebooks are incredibly important. So I would say um, I crossed a wild type female fly with a sepia-eyed male. Now, actually, I want to specify the genotypes here. So uh, I'm going to put these in parentheses, and a wild-type female fly is SE plus SE plus. And the flies that you order from the, um, from the in the virtual fly lab are always dominant in less in case in less of in, except for um, the lethal allele. So I'm going to do a superscript here. How do you do that? Uh, yeah, superscript plus and superscript plus. Okay, with sepia eyed male, S E S E. And you notice I'm using small letters for the genotypes in using Morgan's notation. Then I can see say something like you know. As you can see <laughs> below, um, I don't know if that's necessary. Um, or, uh, or how about this? And obtained the following results. Um, and then I show the results, and then I'll go below the results here. I guess I need to change back to what size is that? 14. Okay. Um, 100% of the F1 offspring are wild type. Uh, and then you know what? I, I, we know what the genotype is because these are the heterozygotes. So it's SE plus, SE plus, SE. And then I need to make that plus into a superscript. Okay, format, superscript. Um, and then I can say just as Mendel would have predicted. Um, because really the, the point of the first uh, and the third experiments are to demonstrate that um, for some traits in the fruit fly, the traits are inherited in the same way uh, that Mendel would have predicted, in the same way that he saw in the traits of the pea plant. Okay, so then next, I could say next, um, I crossed the F1s. Well, let's do that. So we go back to the virtual fly lab. We're going to return to menu, uh, return to lab. I'll go ahead and grab that jar out again and subject these poor flies to another round of sorting. So this time we're going to take the female fly and instead of just examining it, we're going to use her in a new mating and then zoom out. And then we're going to click on the males and use a male in a new mating. And even though this seems a little bit weird to take like a brother and a sister fly, uh, or flies that could be brothers and sisters, um, and put them together, it's very commonly done in breeding. Uh, sir, uh, yeah. So let's take a look at, let's put that mating jar in the incubator. And of course, uh, 15, uh, 14 days are going to pass. And if we zoom in, we see that this generation is another generation of little babies, and a little, and um, they're the F2 generation. So you can think to yourself, okay, well, what's going to likely be the ratio in the F2s? It should be something like three to one, right? Well, let's take a look. So we're going to uh, knock out the flies again, and then sort them with our little paintbrush. And this time we should see. As you can see, four piles. And it looks like, okay, so males and females, and about an equal number of each male, 
female, male, female. And it looks like this might be three times as much. And if we look at the numbers here, 470, 444, 130, yeah, 158, yeah. That looks like it could be. So let's send the data to computer uh, in order to look at it a little closer. So uh, we got 1,209 flies total. And then uh, if we click on ignore sex, because this is not a sex link trait, you only want to use, you, you uh, you want to use ignore sex in all cases except for the sex link trait, which is experiment number four. Um, we see we do have something like a 75-25 ratio. Now, if I zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit closer, it's not exactly 75% and 25%. It's a little bit off because the uh, virtual fly lab simulates the real world. In the real world, you won't get exact ratios. Uh, it's like when you flip a coin ten times, you won't always get uh, five heads and five tails, and certainly when you flip a coin ten times, or I'm sorry, a hundred times, or a thousand times, you won't get a 50-50 ratio. It might be a little bit off, um, just kind of the natural variation. So uh, let's go ahead and copy this information using our snipping tool, our screen capture tool. You can use whatever tool you like to do screen captures. Um, and let's go back to our paper, our, our notebook here. Um, and let's paste this in. Okay, and then I can say um, 75, or let's see, uh, approximately 75% of the flies uh, were uh, wild type and 25% were um, mutant. You, know, you could say mutant or you could say sepia-eyed. Um, uh, this is a 3 to 1 ratio just as Mendel would have predicted. Um, let's see, you know what, we can actually put um, the genotype in for the sepia-eyed flies because we know that it's SE, SE. I might want to put a little space between those. I don't know. Is that really up to you? Um, but you know, we don't know if we go back to our. So that's the. That's pretty much the the end of um, experiment number one. And I was just going to say we don't know what the genotype of the wild type uh, flies are. In fact, if we go back to our virtual fly lab, um, we see uh, with a we see that um, we'll be using a test cross coming up. So um, let's go back to our notebook and then you know we could start experiment number two uh, here. Now in the case of experiment number two, if we return to menu, return to lab, <coughs> go ahead and sort those flies. Like I said before, the recessive flies or the mutant flies, we know we know um, we know what their genotype is. We know their phenotype is big SE, and we know their genotype is little as SESE. -S -E. But we don't know for um, the uh, wild type flies. They could either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. And so now it's your task to to cross these individuals to maybe include this one in the new mating with a homozygous recessive individual, uh, so that you can then determine for those for this particular fly out of that bunch. Uh, is it homozygous dominant or heterozygous? So anyway, that's number two. And um, the dihybrid cross is uh, you're looking for the one, uh, three to one, I'm sorry, nine to three to three to one ratio on the F2. And the sex link trait, you're sort of looking to reproduce uh, what's going on here, uh, where you get this kind of flip of the genders with the traits. Um, and number five is trial and error with find the mutant. Uh, number six is uh, lethal alleles, trying to reproduce what happens in the Mexican hairless dogs in, with fruit flies. And finally, number seven is trying to, um, of course, figure out uh, epistasis, so um, trying to see where one gene masks another. And be sure to let me know if you have any questions.